how's it going everybody? My name is Sakba and today I want to talk about something a little more technical. So today I want to talk specifically about logic. And uh, I know that I said this is going to be technical, but I promise I will throw in a little bit tidbits here and there that are somewhat more fun and interesting and hopefully the examples, as always, will help you guys get a better handle on some of the logic that I'm going to be talking about today. Which I will get into in a second, but do mind that this is not an entire introduction to logic and this is not entirely for crazy experienced creators who have a lot of experience outside of Little Big Planet and Dreams. All of that is outside of my zone of being able to teach you about things, so uh, you may have to go elsewhere for that. But for anybody else that works in Dreams or Little Big Planet, hopefully you'll find this sort of video useful. And if you do, feel free to leave a like down below and feel free to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more about this sort of thing in Dreams and elsewhere. But yeah. Let's get right into the video then, okay. So like I said, as a warning, this is a technical video largely meant for creators who create mostly within Dreams and Little Big Planet. Anyone who has experience with traditional game design will probably find this video a bit elementary, my dear, but I'm trying to explain it in the best way possible to my fellow Little Big Planet and Dreams creators. At any rate, now that that's over with, let's get into it. So the inspiration for this video came specifically from an issue that I'm seeing quite often across the Dreamiverse. Basically, a lot of racing games that I've played through have the same issue. When the car you're controlling runs into an obstacle, it ramps upwards and continues to ride on into the sky, essentially infinitely. This issue shows that behind the scenes, as with most games, the car operates a bit differently than you would expect. For one, the wheels are not moving the car, but are either reacting to collision with the ground, and spinning likewise, or they're animated to spin, but in reality, they're not colliding with the ground at all. That's totally fair, as it gives you a lot more control with how the car animates and moves, and long story short, it just makes the gameplay better. The issue with these cars shooting off into space, though, is also a result of this type of programming. And it's a simple fix, really, as the creator really just needs to require one wheel to be in collision with the ground terrain in order for the drive forward animation and or drive forward movers to activate. In other words, the creator needs to add another condition for movement, e.g. if the car is touching the ground and if the acceleration button is pressed, then the car will move forward. These if-then functions are the foundation of gameplay in general and, you know, programming, but in Dreams, we're working with them very differently and very visually. These if-then statements are often added on during playtesting for one, and they're certainly not limited to driving games for two. Another issue that I see all over the Dreamiverse is platformers lacking an if-then statement for walls. Basically, their games are treating walkable terrain and walls as the same type of terrain, which allows a lot of characters to jump off walls that are just a little bit too horizontal. Is that what I was looking for? I think that was the word I was looking for. Again, all that needs to be added is an if statement that says if the character is touching the terrain as a requirement for the jump animation to activate. Now this also requires that walls be considered different collision types than ground terrain, but that's an easy change in the object or group settings. But this is an incredibly simplified explanation of if-then statements within gaming, but because most of us are not going to be creating levels entirely from scratch, it's the explanation that I think a lot of people could find useful. If you are finding issues with how your character is controlling, or if someone breaks your level or character, find out what broke, and that can often be fixed with an additional if, which I'm just going to start calling conditions because that's far easier than continuing to end my sentence with if, which I'm sure is irritating a lot of people out there. So if your character is running up terrain that you want them to slide down, make collision with that terrain a condition to disable the running animation, or more likely make the running animation require that the character is not colliding with that wall terrain. If you want your RPG character to sheath her sword while out of combat, require a certain tag nearby for that combat-ready stance, that's the unsheathed weapon, to activate, and make sure all of the enemies are tagged correctly to activate this stance. It's not a super complicated concept, but this video is not meant to be a super complicated video. Instead, it's meant to bring about a mindset that a lot of creators should focus on when creating and playtesting levels. If you run into a lot of problems with the character or enemy that you're creating, more likely than not, it can be solved with an if-then statement. Back in Little Big Planet, a lot of the questions that I'd get were, how do I make X? And my advice for this video is to think of those questions in the if-then way. How do I make a shooter? Well, creating the gun is somewhat straightforward, and you can find tutorials on making a first-person character on YouTube or in-game. The basics of a shooter past that are if the player hits R2, then the gun fires. If you want to add ammo, well then if the gun fires, then the ammo count is reduced by one. But then you also have to modify the logic for firing the gun to if the gun is not empty on ammo, 
and R2 is pressed, then the gun will fire. And then if the gun is empty, then a giant reload animation shows up on screen when you press R2. And lastly, if you have the ammo in your stock and you're not at full ammo, and you press the reload button, then the character will perform the reload animation and your clip will reset to full. Using this technique is a really good way to solve problems in your level, and I thought it was important enough to talk about in a video, especially for new creators and, well, even old creators alike. If you're having trouble going through your level and you're running into a lot of problems, generally thinking this way is the best way to solve it. And, uh, well, yeah, that's how I've done a lot of my, my fixing and tweaking at the end of the level. But let me know what you guys think. What do you do to fix your level when things aren't quite working? And do you also have friends like my friend Kyle that just really like to break all of your levels when you thought that you spent hours and hours playtesting, but you very clearly did not spend enough time to resist that type of game-breaking player. Well, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Feel free to like the video and subscribe if you want to see more, but no pressure as always, and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Have a wonderful day. Again, I feel like I'm doing squats this whole video. All right, bye!